If you're thinking that Power Automate, one of those tools in your Microsoft 365 licenses, bit complex, it's something for back-end development processes, or maybe it's insecure, or maybe it's expensive, stick with me for the next 10 minutes and I'm going to show you a few examples, a few use cases that's hopefully going to bring it right back into your world where you can use it pretty much within a few seconds or minutes to do something valuable for you. And it's that that I want to share with you in this video. Hope you enjoy. I'm not aiming to be a salesperson for Power Automate. That's not my goal for this video at all. But one thing I really don't like is when decisions get made and they're based on either misinformation or fear of the unknown or only partial information. And people like I did this exactly the same get scared of stuff like Power Automate and go, oh, I can't use it, it's too difficult, it's too scary, it's insecure, it's going to cost me loads. Let me just step through those questions and those worries and see if I can give you a bit of insight that allows you to make a proper choice. So let's start at the beginning. Maybe we'll tackle this big concern that, like most people, I don't have time to learn a really complex tool. My team doesn't have time. I don't want to waste time. So let's just put that time on the table. Power Automate is kind of designed for people like you and me with that worry. It's designed for business users, for end users, for people who want to do something super, super quick. And it might be people, this looks a bit overwhelming on your screen now, but people who've got a Microsoft 365 subscription with all these apps in front of them and they possibly, because of time, rarely dip into them. Well, I'd strongly encourage you to just do this one thing and do it as you're watching this video. Pop on over to your browser and type in office365.com forward slash apps. You can be signed in, you can be on a different site, doesn't matter. You can not be signed in, but you're going to have to sign in to get to this website, okay? So you're going to land on a page that looks a bit like this. To get you where I was, just go over there and click all apps. Then I want you to type into this top search bar up here, Power Automate. You can get to the same location that I'm going to show you now via make.powerautomate.com. Just type it in, it's a really nice shortcut if you're in any other browser tab, you just want to go straight here. I'm just going to pause it to talk about two things. First of all, cost. Is this going to cost me a lot once I go into this? The thing to bear in mind is that Power Automate out of the box is part of your Microsoft 365 license at whatever level that you have it. Um, so you will need it enabled by somebody in your administrative team or perhaps yourself, you've got that capability. But once it's switched on and you're allowed to use it, you as an end user can start to use it uh, in a meaningful way. And that's the example I'm going to show you in a minute. So hold that thought. So you can use it in a meaningful way, but also your teammates or your team can use it in a meaningful way. And this comes on to the second question I want to answer now. And that's the question of, Am I going to worry about sharing my data accidentally if my teammates get hold of this? Are they going to start spamming information out that I don't want them to have? Well, what I would say is let's not start at the worst case scenario. Let's roll that right back. Yes, you are absolutely correct that if you set things up badly, you can send data out of your tenant to the wrong place. So don't start with a big hairy spider of that big complex system you have in your mind. Start simple, start with a use case, an end user use case that's meaningful to you. Build up your confidence from simple foundations as your knowledge grows and as your team's knowledge grows with a bit of conversation, a bit of training, you can then explore together don't expect for everyone to go for the worst case scenario straight away. And maybe tell people that. If you're going to roll it out, just say, start simple. We're allowed to do these things. Don't do these things. And keep an eye on what's happening. There's loads of strategies to monitor and measure and all that good stuff. But we won't go into that today. So yeah, don't start with a big hairy spider. Start with your, your cup of tea, a small process that's going to really help you. So we're back on this screen here. Um, quick 101 for Power Automate. I do feel like this is a bit of an introduction to Power Automate. It probably is to a degree, but it's also worth stating this. You've got probably three main areas you can create these wonderful automations from. You can use this thing called Copilot and type stuff in. You can go over here to templates and you can use pre-baked flows that people have done. But I'm going to say this to you. If you're just starting out, watch a tutorial like this. Find a use case that you need, find a tutorial about a use case that you need and follow it. So you start to learn really how to build things using this create option here. Because if you don't understand the rudiments of what this thing does, then you're just going blind. And that's where people get scared off. So don't do that. Back to that time question. It's probably going to take you, I don't know, the, the time it takes to watch this video to learn enough to be a little bit dangerous with it. Go and do your first test. So... 
There's a number of different options. That's me. First of all, summarise back to that. Use Create for the first time you're going to do it. I don't believe you should use Copilot. I don't believe you should use templates because you don't know what's going on. Automated means it wakes up, does a thing without you interacting. Instant means it'll happen right away when it's triggered by you manually or by a button somewhere. Scheduled means it happens on a schedule. It's pretty obvious. Ignore this stuff here. Don't do that on your first test. Pick a test that's going to happen without you interacting. Skip this first screen. It's lovely, but you don't need it because I want you to go straight to this canvas. What this canvas is, anybody can use it. I'm clicking with my mouse and I'm moving it around. You've seen stuff like this before. Get rid of Copilot. It's a distraction. Add your first trigger. It's the first thing. That's the thing that wakes up Power Automate. Now, complexity. This is a big doubt that people have got. It's too complex. I can't do it, John. I'm not a coder. Don't get it. Again, don't go to the worst case scenario and try and pick out the most complex scenario. Think about something basic. I want to do something with email. All right, use a bit of logic. I've got some options here for triggers. I've got a search. Let me type the word email. Surprise, surprise, a lot of the legwork's done for you. You've got all these things that can happen as a result of the word email. So these little things you're seeing down here are groups of activity that it will cause Power Automate to wake up. So I've got Outlook. I've got Office 365 Outlook. The difference is that's your personal Outlook. This is your business Outlook. So um, you've got a number of actions here. You can see more. There's loads more. I won't baffle you with it. I just want to prove it's not that complex. I type the word email in. I've got, all right, when a new email's flagged, no. When a new email arrives, that'll be good enough. I'll click that. And now, again, have I got code to do? No, you haven't. You've got parameters to fill in. But if you can fill in a form, you can fill in parameters. Your team can fill in parameters. This will take you seconds. So what are we doing here? We're just basically creating a filter for any email that arrives. And I'm going to put my email address in here. And I'll fill this in in a sec, but I'll talk you through it. So it comes to me. I could say, only wake up when an email from a certain person. So my client arrives. So I could put my client's email address in there. I could also limit whether it's got attachments. I can then say things like, only do this flow if it's an urgent email. All you're doing is setting up like a little sentry, a watcher, a person, an, act an actor that's going to watch your email inbox and without you caring or knowing, it's going to go, ah, you've got one of those. So when it does one of those, when it finds the right email, let's just quickly fill it in. I filled in to say, whenever an inbox item lands to me, and it's urgent, do a thing. That's my trigger done. Quick pop quiz. I need to do something. It's called an action. The actions are defined again in the same way as I've just done the trigger there. Have a guess on screen what you click next. Plus, it's dead easy. Really, really, really easy. Add an action. You just keep doing this and your flows get more and more complex. You learn more and more skills and hey presto, before you know it, you're a whiz. But again, what do I want to do? I want to get a Teams message. So I'm gonna type Teams. Again, it's done a lot of the legwork for me. I'm not coding, I'm just selecting and I'm configuring. So what do I want to do? Well, I've got a few different groups in here. That might be a bit confusing, but you'll get used to it. You'll get, you'll get the idea of which ones to choose. So just click See More. Big tip for a first starter, make sure you recognize there's a little See More link with a lot of the things you do in Power Automate. So what do we want to do? Let's just go down here. Let's post a message in a chat or a channel. Again, configuration items, it's just you setting up this action. So I want to post as, let's just say I want to post as the person running the flow. Where do I want to post? I want to post in a channel. If you notice what's happening is a lot of the legwork has been done for me I'm, I've selected channel, it's now given me an option of which channels to pop into. I want to put it in Club 365. I want to put it into our general channel. So that's going to pop up here. Let's choose choose general. And um, the message, it's just a box, put some text in there. You can start to add information, but let's not worry about that for now. I want to prove how simple this is. Okay, forget my English, forget my grammar. I'm just proving that you can do this. For you to not have to watch your inbox and for you to get notified when the important emails land is as simple as that. Two actions, really, really simple. I'm scrolling, sorry, that might be blowing your eyes. But just to make it uh, really simple, I click save. It's decided that it's gonna call it whatever it's gonna call it. I can just change that, doesn't matter. Um, 
I'm going to give it a test, but this is exactly the same as if I now just leave this flow. In fact, I'll do this. I'm not going to test it because I know this is going to work. I'll come out of this flow. And now, because this flow is actually turned on, that says turn off, which means turn it off. If I click that, it'll say turn on. It's just like pressing a button. Because this is on, whenever an email now arrives in my inbox, that flow will run. This is like a monitoring screen so I can see what's happening. So for your first experiment, just get used to the idea that when you click edit or when you click create, you go into this thing called the canvas. When you have finished doing what you're doing and you've saved it, you click this little back icon and you're into the monitoring screen. And this is where you'll see the history of your flow running. So you might have spotted that. I'll just click the refresh there and this succeeded. Now I know it succeeded because I've got a message in Teams I'll show you in a second, but a lot of this again, really simple. Is it complex? Do we need to be a developer? No, you can debug, you can check things without being a developer. So I'm in this run history screen. Just to show you, I've got all my flows here. Each one's listed. You see the little links, they pop up under every flow that you've got. Again, under every run that you've done for that flow, you can see 31 seconds ago, I've got a little hyperlink. I click it and I can go into the flow and see what actually happened. So it took 0.3 of a second for it to read that something had happened, an urgent email had arrived. Let me just prove to you what that looks like. This one popped into my inbox. There it is in, this, in the title, urgent popped in. It recognized that, it woke, to, woke up, it posted a message into a chat or a channel. Now, you'll get used to what this gobbledygook means. I'm not going to bother you with that for now. But what then happened is this message popped over into my Teams. So, hey, a really important email arrived. Surprise, surprise, that's gone into the general channel of the Club 365 uh, team. So... It's not the biggest example. I Like I said in another video, I work quite a lot on small process, little things that's going to help save you time. Do 10 of those. It saves you 10, 15 minutes every day. 10, 15 minutes, you're not having to do the same repeat tasks, which is really, really helpful. Before I leave this screen, I've got one other thing to show you that hopefully will kind of give you a little bit more taste for experimentation. So if I go back into edit here, another question that a lot of people think about is, well, is that going to restrict me just to Microsofty things? The absolute truth of the matter is there are more connections in Power Automate than you can probably imagine. I'll just show you here. If I had an action, you've got all these different services. If you just look at the icons, that'll give you an idea for how many different services this thing can connect to. They're not all Microsofty stuff. There's SQL. There's, I don't know what half of these things are, but there's ones that you can get for free. There's also ones like Adobe that you can you can pay extra for, but still it's the same process of add it, configure it, use it. Sometimes there's a bit more complexity, but I've got loads of videos and stuff to help you with that. But I'm just keeping going down here. You see how big this scroll is? There are thousands of connections, and if you haven't got one, you can create them. Again, a little bit more advanced, but... This thing's flexible. That's what a lot of people don't realize. It's not just a Microsoft tool. Yeah, it lives in your Microsoft license, but you can go outside it and pull stuff to it, and it's super, super flexible. So to jump right back to the beginning, I'm going to start with small processes that will actually genuinely help me and save me some time, and I hope you do too. I hope you kind of take this inspiration and go and explore. And if you do, uh, drop a comment in the comments underneath, underneath this video. Don't forget, of course, to like and subscribe. I'd love you to do that because it means that I should keep doing these. And I'll see you very soon in the Academy. Uh, see you next time. Take care.